Welcome to Fairfield High School for playoff basketball. The Hamilton Big Blue is facing off against the Lakota East Thunderhawks. I'm Max Earl, alongside me is Camden Braden, and this one should be very close up to the end. Yeah, it should be a very good game. We got two teams here today that are starting to really peak at the right time. Hamilton coming in here, coming off some big wins, and these two teams are teams that played once during the regular season. Hamilton taking the win in that game and what was a very physical and fast-paced type of game. Yeah, for sure. They lost by six last time these two faced off. The winner of this game will go on to play either Sycamore or Oak Hills. Uh, in the, and um, pretty much the big difference, every, these two teams are pretty matched up on common opponents besides Lakota West, which Hamilton did beat twice. Yeah, Hamilton did beat Lakota West twice, and that is definitely something to note because Lakota West obviously beat Lakota East twice. So just kind of the matchups right there. And Hamilton very long and athletic, just looking to kind of attack you with that. And for some little, a little bit more insight, we're going to send it down to Blake Furnish, who's on the sideline. With that, uh, the keys to the game tonight for me is to limit Andrea Holden. Uh, he had 26 points 14, and 14 rebounds. His paint presence is incredible. Tonight we got to limit his impact in the paint for the Hawks offense. I think the key to the game tonight is just to get everyone involved. Trey Perry is going to be Trey Perry. Um, say next we saw Bayes Whelan and Tyler Bachman have huge impacts on the game. Get them involved. Play good offense, limit the turnovers, and in the fourth quarter, they've got to they've got to make an impact. They limit the turnovers, do what they can. With that, I'm gonna send it back up to you guys. Thank you, Blake. And with that, we are getting ready for tip-off here. Starting lineups coming out for both teams. And Hamilton, again, another team that has a little bit more size than Lakota East does. Yeah, Lakota East has faced a bunch of teams this year who are bigger than them. Not really much size on this East team, but the size that they do have is very quality and very good. Just kind of that one-two punch with Derek Jackson and P.J. McFarland, obviously. Derek Jackson, kind of your senior leader at that center position for the Thunderhawks. And P.J. McFarland brings in great relief whenever he's in foul trouble or needs a rest. Yeah, and I believe Blake talked about this down there on the sideline, but Kiefer East is going to be shutting down Andre Holden, who is a beast underneath the rim. Yeah, definitely a beast underneath the rim. And for the second game in a row, the Hawks are going to get all that they can handle in the paint. And Hawks just got to make sure that they're playing good fundamental defense and keeping their guards, Hamilton's guards, from passing the ball down there to Holden and keep Holden from beating them. And we've talked about it a lot this year, East being the Trey Perry show early on. But last game we saw everyone really getting involved and points really spread across the board. Multiple guys above 10 points and East hoping to relocate that again today. Yeah, and that was one of the keys of the game for Coach Adkins. He said, Trey, it's obviously good when Trey Perry can get going, but he's going to get his points. The keys and when the Thunderhawks are at, that, at their best, it's when everyone's touching the ball and when everyone is involved. So definitely looking to get more of that ball rotation going tonight. Yeah, a couple guys. Tyler Bachman, Elijah Perry really stepped up in that last game. Perry was a, a big stepping stone there on that defense, a big reason why they got so many turnovers last game, and they're hoping to do that again today, obviously. Yeah, and then Hamilton and St. X are definitely kind of very similar teams with the way that they kind of run their offense through their big men. And um, Hamilton, a team, obviously, that can turn it over a lot if you make them. So 
obviously last game against St. X, Hawks forcing a lot of turnovers, putting a lot of pressure on the ball, keeping the ball outside the paint area. Trey Perry and Elijah Perry should be big on the perimeter tonight. Yeah, and this Hamilton offense really relies on getting the ball in the back door and finding people under the rim. They don't take a lot of threes, the least amount in the GMC, so he's just going to have to be wary in the paint. Yeah, and the Hawks are going to be making to look Hamilton. They're going to be making to look Hamilton um, shoot some contested threes here today. And um, as we get ready for tip off here, seeing the starting five come out, and Elijah Perry is included in that starting five once again. Yeah, Perry played great last week. Jackson, Bachman, Whelan, and Perry are the other starters out there. Getting ready for tip off here. Derek Jackson looks like he's going to go up against Holden for the tip off here. And then obviously very similar kind of size matchup, but Hamilton's definitely got a lot of strength on that team. Just tall guys who are also not going to fold at the site of contact, so should be a fun matchup today. Ref lining up. He'll whistle. And the game's underway. Holden immediately tipping it all the way up the court. Putting it up immediately is Hamilton, but Elijah Perry is able to come up with the rebound after that miss. And a good job by the Hawks right there, being responsive on defense and making it hard on Dre Tillery to get that shot up. Perry will give it to Elijah Perry. He did a good job of working it around the perimeter and controlling possession last game. Yeah, and they're going to have to do more of that this game as it looks like Hamilton's coming out in that matchup zone right now. Hawks going to have to be looking to attack that with ball rotation. Whelan under pressure. He's triple team. The ball's going to come out. Hamilton will able to get away with it. Here's Reed who will go up for the layup, and the first points of the game go to the Hamilton. Big blue. That's definitely not ideal for the Thunderhawks getting a turnover on their first possession. And that's really how Hamilton start, produces their offense, just getting the ball off of turnovers and running in transition. Jackson gives it to Perry, having a little bit of a discussion with Coach Atkins on the sideline as he takes it up the court. Perry giving it to Elijah Perry, trying to find somebody open. And you see Hamilton running that matchup zone, picking up their men, but Holden kind of locking it down there in the paint. Trey Perry looks like that one was almost tipped, but he's able to field it cleanly. He's continues to work it around the perimeter as Hamilton's kind of got that paint on locks right now. And we've seen East start games with this kind of offense where they're just playing really slow to start out, trying to get everyone involved in the game, just have it not be a one-man show, and it's worked for them the first two games of the playoffs. Whelan puts up a three that is good, and East has three points now on the board. Very promising sight right there from Bayes Whelan, and we talked about getting the other guys involved, and he is someone who has come up huge for the Hawks throughout this playoff run. Driving in here is Holden. He'll get his first points of the game and an and-one shot opportunity. Yeah, and just a little bit of a defensive breakdown right there for the Thunderhawks, just allowing the ball in the paint way too easily right there, and Holden makes him pay for it. Holden is scary under the rim, not afraid of contact at all, and he's also good from the free throw line. 65%, he'll try to make his first. And when you do have a big that is good from the free throw line, that's obviously something that brings on a greater challenge, and the Thunderhawks obviously going to have to keep him off the stripe. Hamilton back to a two-point lead, 5-3 to three here. Elijah Perry thought about dishing it to Trey Perry in the paint. Brockman back to Perry. He's really slow, slowing things down here. Yeah, and that's just kind of going to be how they look to play this game, just kind of slow and methodical, getting those open shots against this good Hamilton defense. Perry thought about putting it up. He's not going to. Bachman takes a three, and it's good as well from the same spot as Whelan. And two for two from the three-point line for the Thunderhawks again. Very great start for them on offense. Tillery trapped there by two guys. Perry tried to swat it. Somehow he's able to get it in, but Derek Jackson able to tip it off the foot of Holden, and East will retain possession. And as this game goes on, expect the... Expect Hamilton to kind of run that Princeton offense set where they're going to put Holden in the middle. So Hawks are definitely going to have to be weary of those backdoor cuts and make sure that they're staying honest on defense. Trey Perry taking up the court now. East trying to expand on this one-point lead. Whelan finds Bachman, who will take another three. That one's on the money as well. Three threes in a row for East early. Yeah, and Tyler Bachman right there just doing what he does best, catching and shooting that three ball. Great start for him. Reed puts it up from beyond the arc, and that is going to be good for Hamilton as well. A shooting fest here early. And that may, might be kind of ideal if you're the Thunderhawks because Hamilton is a team that does not shoot a lot of threes, just working to get inside in the paint. Not a bad closeout right there by Trey Perry, just a good shot. East looks like they're trying to get another open look from beyond the arc. Whelan thought about taking it from that same spot. Perry going to put it up from three now. And finally, it's going to be a miss. The hot streak from both teams is going to end there. 
Yeah, and just a little bit of a Lakota East heat check right there from Trey Perry, and that is the guy you want taking it, but just unfortunately not able to get it to fall. Reed gonna give it over here to Barry. Gives it back to Reed. Reed will try to drive it in himself. Looks like Jackson didn't see that one, and Hamilton gets two points. Yeah, and just a little too easy right there for the big blue driving into the paint. And Jackson obviously working on Holden right there. Didn't get to help side in time, and it allows for an easy layup. East beginning their possession here, working it around the perimeter. Wheelan, Bachman, and Perry have really been the key three early on on this East offense. Yeah, and looking to get them to touch the ball here early, and it has resulted in some three-pointers. Whelan almost had an open look there, but he gives it to Elijah Perry in the paint, who's going to get a good layup there. Very high IQ ball from Whelan and Elijah Perry right there. Obviously great on the cut from Elijah Perry and perfect on Whelan for seeing him. An open three going to be no good there for Bryant, as Perry will get a chance to take it up the court now. Perry driving in in the court. Here's Whelan. He thought about taking that three. East looking for something open. Whelan down the baseline. He's got two guys on him, though, and East will get possession as the ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, and one thing I really like seeing from the Hawks is just outside of that first possession, just really taking care of the basketball and making some smart passes here and just getting the ball inside the paint, just working it around, getting everyone open, and everyone is involved here early. Interesting look here for East. McFarlane going to come in for Jackson early. Luke Atkins in the game now as well, and Ty Smyers is down there in the paint. Yeah, definitely getting some offense and some shooting in here for the Thunderhawks, and just kind of a little small ball lineup plus P.J. McFarlane. Perry, a wide open three. That's going to be an air ball, and Hamilton will get the ball. Very rare air ball right there from Trey Perry in Hamilton's student section, letting him hear it. Perry rarely misses when he has an open opportunity like that. Just maybe got a little too excited that time, didn't get enough on it. And an alley-oop there for Hamilton. Holden showing how athletic he is there in the paint. Yeah, and again, McFarland just not really ready for that one, kind of playing his spot in the paint and not, and just letting Holden get behind him right there. You cannot let Holden get behind your defense. East does not want to go on a cold streak here early. They work it around the paint here. Luke Atkins got it. He'll give it to Luke Shaw, who made crucial free throws at the end of that last game. As Luke Atkins puts one up, no good off the rim, and it looks like two East guys fought each other for the rebound. Yeah, just Smyers and McFarland not being really aware that they're on the same team right there trying to grab that rebound in. Hawks are getting quality looks from beyond the arc here early in. Earlier they were making the Big Blue pay the price, but now just kind of missing a few of those. Big Blue will dish it in. They'll get a possession of their own. Still only a one-point game here. It's been back and forth early on. Yeah, and the Hawks have just got to start standing tall on defense. These have some, been some of the worst defensive sequences that we've seen from them throughout this entire playoff run. Just too many blown assignments and too many opportunities for Hamilton to score in the paint. Perry, a good swat there on that pass, but it ends up going out of bounds. Hamilton will regain possession. And again, that's just one of those plays that should be a turnover. you got the three-man trap up top and Trey Perry jumping that ball and just unfortunately giving Hamilton another chance at a possession. Reed will give it here to Page. Page had 18 in the last game against Fairfield. Holden got it now. He'll try to drive it in. Dishes it back out. And a deep three there from Hamilton that's going to bounce off the rim. Not going to be good. And McFarland stepped out of bounds on that rebound. Yeah, and just a great job by P.J. McFarland going up against three guys to get that board. Just unfortunately foot a little too far to the left right there. McFarland's got a tall task guarding Holden there in the paint. First time we've seen King with the ball here today. Giving it back to Reed. Page trying to get something going here on Luke Adkins. Hamilton continuing just to run their motion offense. Yeah, the Hawks definitely doing a better job communicating on defense, kind of figuring out what Hamilton's going to bring. Holden, a lot of contact there, but it's clean. Perry going to give it up to Smyers, who has an open look, and two points will go for Lakota East. Yeah, that might have been a foul right there on Trey Perry. Just not on Trey Perry, but they fouled Trey Perry right there, obviously grabbing him in transition right there. But a great job by him getting the ball out to Ty Smyers for the easy look. McFarlane all over Reed, and it looks like a hold going to be caught on Hamilton after that ball bounced off the rim. Yeah, and just a better job on defense by the Thunderhawks these last few possessions, just not giving Hamilton easy looks and making them work for their shots. Four new guys coming in here for East. Bachman back out there, so is Jackson. Elijah Perry. And Whelan back out there as well. Yeah, four guys who are just out there for the Hawks doing their job these last few possessions, and now the Hawks are going to bring back in some size. Jackson on Holden there. He's going to foul him, and another and one attempt for Holden coming up. And that's just one of those plays for Derek Jackson where you just look at Coach Atkins and be like, what do you want me to do there? Because just 
really athletic play right there from Holden on the scoop layup. Yeah, and East did play 6'11", Jacob Wessler last week, but I think you could even argue that Holden is a tougher task just because of how fast he is in the paint. Yeah, and Wessler is a 6'11 guy, but he's not really as athletic as Holden, and Holden obviously showing his athleticism in his burst here early on. After that foul, Jackson going to come back out, and McFarlane will come back in. Holden lines up for his free throw attempt, and it will fall for him 15-13 to 13 early. Yeah, and I think that's just a substitution right there where you just don't want to get Derek Jackson in foul trouble here in the first half. Whelan going to pull up from three. It's going to bounce off the front of the rim, but Bachman's there for the rebound. East works it around the perimeter here. Perry able to muscle that pass. Whelan tried to step back. Not going to take the shot attempt. Wise there as Perry puts it up in the paint and an impressive layup. Two more points for East. And that's just a good job right there from Whelan, not really pulling a bad shot right there, just able to kind of pull it down and reset on East's offense. And Trey Perry just going right up against Holden right there, taking on the challenge. Both teams are locked in on offense right now. Tillery going to give it to King. Hamilton still trying to find somebody cutting in the back door there. They don't like taking threes. As a tip pass there by McFarlane. Going to be fielded, though, by Page. And you just got to give props to the Hawks for not really panicking on offense because it seems like every time Hamilton's gotten an and one or just one of those looks to go, the Hawks have had a response. Momentum not really factoring into East here. Perry on King in the paint. And King just looked like the bigger man down there on that one. And that's just great footwork right there from King obviously using his pivot right there around Trey Perry, able to get another easy look. McFarland going to give it back to Bachman. East continues to work it around the three-point line here. Giving it back to Perry. Bachman will pull up from the corner. And three points for East, 18 to 17. This game continues to be back and forth. And just a great job on the ball rotation right there from the Thunderhawks. And just a little bit of a defensive breakdown right there from the Big Blue, giving Bachman yet another open look from three. He is hot here early on. That time the alley-oop not good to hold in as East will slow things down. Looks like they want to hold for the last shot of this first quarter. Yeah, Moore has been a very offensive first quarter. Expect to see some less scoring on defenses. Both coaches during this breaker definitely going to be putting an emphasis on that side of the ball. Whelan got a little bit of pressure, but he does give it back to Bachman. Bachman's got Reed on him. Bachman going to move around a little here up the sideline. Hand off to Perry. Perry going to... It looks like he's going to be fouled on that shot from about the free throw line, and he'll get to take two shots from there anyway. Yeah, not really sure if Perry right there was trying to pass it back out to Whelan or take that shot, but nonetheless, they foul him on the way up, so it will go down as a shooting foul. And just, again, very perfect storm right there for the Hawks on that possession. Elijah Perry on the season made three out of his four free throws. He'll line up for two. Eight seconds left here in this first quarter. And no matter what happens here, Hawks are going to have to lock up on defense uh, to end this quarter. Definitely big momentum boost if you can get the lead going into the second. That first one going to spin in and out of the rim. Perry will try to make a second. Luke Shaw checks back in. Perry out of the game for the first time today. Never mind, he's just down there on the opposite side of the floor. Yeah, and Hawks subbing in some defense right here, trying to make things tough on Hamilton on this last possession. And I like the game plan by Coach Atkins, sending Trey Perry back to the other side, trying to prevent any fast break or defensive breakdowns. Neither of the big guys really in there for East right now. Smyers coming in as the big man right now. Eight seconds left. Hamilton will try to score. They're down by two here with eight seconds left in the first quarter. And definitely going to be pushing the tempo right here. Elijah Perry's got a guard up, and the Hawks just cannot foul. Reed going to dish it in there to Tillery, who makes an impressive shot. We will go into the end of the first quarter tied. Stick with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back here, start of the second quarter. We are all tied up 19 to 19 and what has been an offensive fire fest here early. Yeah, and I just really expected this to be a defensive kind of game just with the athleticism of both these teams and kind of the willpower to hustle, but it's really just been kind of the opposite so far. Not that both teams haven't hustled, but there's just been a lot of defensive breakdowns and a lot of mental mistakes on that side of the ball from both ends. Hawks will start out with the ball here, try to take a lead. Perry in the corner, driving it down the baseline. A lot of contact there. Hamilton able to come away with the steal. Here's Reed, and he is fouled there by Whelan going up. And just a good defensive possession right there from Hamilton, kind of trapping Trey Perry on the baseline, making it hard for him to get that pass out. And anytime Hamilton gets an opportunity to run in transition, they are going to take it as you see it right there. And a smart foul by Whelan will send Hamilton to the line. Reed will take two shots. Dribbles, he'll put his first one up, and another point added to Hamilton's total. And I just feel like it'd be good for the Hawks to try to slow this game down because I feel like whichever team going forward here dictates the tempo is going to be the one to win this game. And Hawks have just got to be the first to start getting some stops on defense and just continuing to execute and do their thing on offense. Perry taking it up here, gives it to Whelan. Whelan made a couple threes in that first quarter. Perry dribbling it around back to Whelan at the top of the key. And Hamilton just doing a much better job guarding the perimeter, trying to put an emphasis on that. Mid-range shot good from Whelan. East answers back. And we talk about the catch and shoot ability of guys like Whelan and Bachman, but whenever you see right there Whelan just being able to create his own shot, that's also a very good sight for the Thunderhawks and something that they're going to have to ride out as this game goes on. Davis in the paint. His shot's not going to be good. Perry able to get field the rebound. Trying to take it in himself, gives it to Perry under the rim, gives it back to McFarlane. Here's Perry in the corner for three. Not gonna go for him. Ball bounces out and hits the ref on its way out. Yeah, and right there, Elijah Perry just not really knowing where he is on the floor right there. Could have had the easy layup if he wanted to, but maybe wisely right there decides to pass it back out, and Trey Perry got a good look from three, just couldn't get it to go. Whelan will dish it in. Trying to find someone. McFarland under the rim. He's trapped there in the corner. Not able to get it across the court to Whelan. Tillery able to get it, but he is fouled handling the basketball. And I just think the Thunderhawks, especially McFarland, got to be far, uh, got to be smarter right there. Because if you're trapped on the baseline right there, McFarland, it seems like everyone started to kind of vacate towards the perimeter, forcing McFarland to make a long pass and giving Hamilton an opportunity to jump it. Here's Paige. She'll pass it in for Hamilton, and Reed will take it up. Hamilton will try to regain a lead. Neither team able to pull away here early. It's been tied throughout the entirety of the first two quarters. And again, just a good job by both teams here kind of having answers for whenever one team strikes. And just it's going to be whoever goes on the run first that will kind of pull away from this game. A three there by Hamilton. That's not going to go. McFarland able to field the rebound. Gives it to Shaw, and Perry will take it up now. And that is what you want on every possession on defense if you're the Thunderhawks, just kind of keeping Hamilton out of the paint and forcing them to shoot that three ball as they do not do it that much. Smyers eyeing the court, gives it to Bachman. Bachman got Page on him. Back to McFarland. East trying to slow things down here, it looks like. Smyers spinning around. Back to Shaw at the top of the key. And East not had an open look yet. Yeah, and just a credit to Hamilton's defense. Being able to step up here at the start of the second quarter, just making things tough on Lakota East. McFarlane in the paint. He's got King on him. Back out to Smyers. This possession continues to tick over one minute. And also got to give credit to the Hawks for not forcing up any bad shots, taking as much time as they need on this possession. Both teams getting a little bit of chance to rest as Bachman got two guys on him, gives it to Perry. Perry loses it on a lucky bouncer that goes to Smyers. His shot's not going to fall, though, and King's able to field the rebound. And again, good luck right there from Smyers. Just couldn't, get the, just couldn't get the layup to go right there. And a good job of McFarland being physical right there. Just ends up in the hands of Holden. Reed's three-pointer is not going to be good for him. Perry's got it now. Immediately got Page on him. Smyers to Shaw in the corner. Back to Smyers in the paint, who puts it up for two. Unlucky roll as it rolls off the front of the rim. Hamilton with a fast break opportunity, but they'll choose to slow it down and get their offense set. 
And again, just another unfortunate break right there from Smyers, thinking he had it off the glass right there, but just a little too high of an angle. And good job by the Thunderhawks getting back in transition on defense, not letting Hamilton get another easy one. Here's Tillery from mid-range. Shot going to roll back out. King puts it back up. He'll get two shots. But his original attempt is not going to be good. And Hamilton leads the GMC in offensive rebounding. And you see another example of it right there from King just being the more physical guy right there in the paint and getting another opportunity to put one up and earning himself a trip to the charity stripe. Free throw is not King's specialty, though. He's only 40% on the year. He'll try to sink both and give Hamilton a two-point lead. First one up and no good. Jackson comes back in here. Luke Atkins again as well. And Jackson coming back in, and both big guys just kind of doing a pretty good job here early. Honestly, I feel like McFarland's been holding it down on the defensive end, and I just feel like the more that Coach Atkins trusts him to be in the paint against those big guys on Hamilton, the more rest that Jackson's going to get and the more energized that both guys will be here as the game goes on. Both free throws no good for Hamilton, but it does bounce out, and they will get another chance on offense. And Hamilton just with a little quicker first step right there, making things hard on the Thunderhawks getting that offensive rebound and unfortunately hits off the Thunderhawks and Hamilton will get another chance to set up and run their offense. Dishing it in here from the baseline. Tillery trying to find somebody open. Here's Holden. Holden with a line to the rim. Puts it up though. Not going to fall for him. Smyers able to field it. And East gets a chance to slow things down and get their offense on the other side of the court. And just McFarland overplaying the left a little bit. A little bit right there. Too much on defense and allows for Hamilton an easy drive to the rim. But fortunately for the Hawks, doesn't go and they're able to clean up the board. Still tied here. 420 left in this second quarter. Perry's got it. He'll dish it in to McFarland in the paint. Pass tipped out and Smyers will let it go out of bounds. And with the length of this Hamilton team, they're also very active with their hands just kind of buying it everything right now. And I feel like if you're the Thunderhawks, you just might want to utilize those pump fakes a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Jackson coming back in for McFarlane. Both teams have not scored in a couple of possessions as Shaw gives it to Smyers. Yeah, two points each from each team here in the second quarter. And again, just a credit to the defensive adjustments by both of these coaches. Perry's got Tillery on him. Trying to box him out, finding somebody. Here's Smyers in the paint. Puts it up, and that one's going to be blocked by King. But it is going to roll out of bounds on Hamilton, a crucial mistake. And just Smyers right there taking it in the paint again. Ideal look right there, just, again, Hamilton able to get up. And, again, that just might be one of those with three people on you. You just might want to see him kind of do a little ball fake, see if you can get a good look or pass it out to a more open shooter. Shaw will get a chance to give East another chance at points as Perry puts it right up, and he will get the basket. And a good job right there from Trey Perry getting in position in there in the paint. A good job by Shaw finding him. That's the exact type of out-of-bounds plays you want to run if you're the Thunderhawks. Three-pointer no good from Page. And Hamilton swats it out-of-bounds as East will get another chance to extend the lead. And East with a rare time tonight, a chance to add some insurance here on this possession. Just, again, ball control is key here and just get your shooters open. Got a lot of them down there on the floor right now. We haven't seen a two-possession game yet today as Perry will do that. Four points. The lead now for East. And with as much as everyone else has been contributing today for the Thunderhawks, it's definitely great whenever you can get Trey Perry going and creating his own shot. King's had a little bit of success in the paint, but he gives it to Holden. Tillery from the top of the key gives it to Reed. 2-3 zone from the Hawks as Perry's on. Kingsley swats it out, though, and East will get the ball. And just a great job by Perry right there, being active with his hands and swatting that ball off of King's knee. And... Trey Perry's ability on defense to just kind of play in all five positions is definitely something that's going to help him at the next level. Trey had four steals against St. X on Thursday. He's continuing that trend on here. Yeah, and these last three minutes of the half are going to be huge here for the Thunderhawks because it's just been kind of one of those tough, gritty games where it's hard to get what you want, especially here in this second quarter. And again, the first team to pull away is definitely going to be riding a lot of momentum here in the, going into the second half. Yeah, and last time these two played, East came out of the locker room a little bit flat. They'll hope not to do that here, as they do have a four-point lead. Yeah, Shaw no. working it around. And that's just why you play these teams twice, and a chance to learn for the Thunderhawks, and Trey Perry again. Perry is lights out, kind of like this entire East team from beyond the arc early, as that one put up an alley-oop attempt, but Holden's able to catch it. 
He's fouled on the floor, though. And I just think that's a smart foul by Trey Perry right there, fouling Holden on the floor right there. Just, again, kind of got a mismatch right there for Hamilton, and Perry quick to think right there. The seven-point unanswered run by East could come to an end here. Hamilton gets another chance on offense. Elijah Perry comes back in for East. Gonna give, even though Trey Perry being on a 7-0 run by himself right now, just going to give him a little break right here. Here is Tillery from beyond the arc. It's not going to fall for him. Hamilton able to rebound it. Those offensive rebounds in the second quarter have just been killer for the Thunderhawks. And a drop pass there by Holden. Rare mistake by him. And Atkins will get a chance to pass it in and get East an even bigger lead here in the second quarter. And things starting to kind of unravel for a bit for the big blue on the offensive end. Obviously, first six minutes of this quarter, only able to generate two points. And just a credit to the adjustments made by Coach Adkins during that break at the end of the first. Just, again, not really having as much breakdowns on defense, limiting transition and making things tough on Hamilton down there. Just beautiful execution here for the Thunderhawks. Adkins subbed out for Perry. Shaw takes up the court. Here's Perry now. He's got Reed on him. A lot of contact in the region will be called on him. Yeah, and just a little bit of a, too much hands right there from Hamilton and Trey Perry obviously trying to get across the court right there, although that'll be the first foul on Hamilton, so Hawks not even really thinking about the bonus right now. Hawks will get another chance on offense. They have a seven point lead here in the second quarter, the biggest one we've seen today. Shaw will give it in here, it looks like to Perry to take it up and get the offense going. And if you're the Hawks right here, just kind of slow things down and even if you're gonna miss a shot or get a tough look, just don't turn the ball over and give Hamilton a chance to run in transition because that's really the only way they're going to try and get back in this game. Shaw with Davis on him. He's taking his time. Shaw trying to find somebody. Pivots, gives it to Elijah Perry. Bachman got it. Clock ticking below, 145. Perry's got it at the top of the key. Trying to find somebody open. Looks like East wants an open three opportunity. And this is just exactly what Coach Atkins wants and exactly what the Thunderhawks should do. Just keep working it around until you get the look you want. And again, eventually Hamilton's defense is going to wear out because of it. Perry to Bachman. Bachman will put it up from the spot they've liked all night, but that one's not going to go for him. Yeah, just Bachman kind of having to hurry up on that one and not really able to get the grip that he wants on the ball, hence the bad rotation. Perry almost able to jump that pass, but the mid-range there by Perry is going to be good, and Hamilton has more points. And finally ending that scoring drought right there. And just Thunderhawks a little right, late on the defensive rotation right there and able to give Hamilton a rare open look here in the second quarter. That will end the 7-0 run for East. They'll try to answer back with 50 seconds left in the second quarter. Both teams got to be happy with what they've been doing going into halftime. Yeah, and this game really could go to anybody with it being a five-point game right here before halftime. But again, Lakota East was just a little bit better execution here in the second quarter, especially towards the middle of that quarter, and that's really been the difference in the ballgame. Here's Shaw working it to Perry. East continues to let the clock just run down. And we've seen them do this all season right before halftime in the end of quarters, just holding for the last shot, making sure that they don't shoot themselves in the foot going into halftime with a comfortable lead. Hamilton not even contesting here. The clock ticks below 12 seconds. Both teams look like they want this one to go to halftime as now it clocks below seven. Perry will drive in, puts it up. He's going to be fouled and get two shots before halftime. And crowd really appreciating Trey Perry right there, just putting that shot up. Very high IQ play. Two guys contesting Trey Perry right there kind of initiates the contact right there a little bit and obviously not giving him any landing space, going to send him to the free throw line every time. Perry, the best in the GMC from the three-point line. His first one is good. And East extends the lead to eight. And there's a reason why he's the best from the free throw line. Getting a lot of attempts up there, so lots of experience and just really smooth strokes, obviously seeing him take his time. Perry's second free throw, good as well. Three seconds left here. East looking to go into half with a seven-point lead, but Hamilton wants... Maybe a lucky three-pointer before half. And Hawks kind of coming out in that man press right now with McFarland back. Just cannot have any defensive breakdowns right here to let Hamilton get behind. This one going to be chucked up. Almost good from the buzzer beater, but it won't go. 30 to 23 is your score here at the end of halftime. Coming out of halftime, we will talk to Coach Atkins, but for now, we will take a quick break. Stick with us.
We welcome you back to Fairfield High School. Halftime winding down. And East really owned the end of that second quarter going on that seven point run unanswered. Yeah, just a great job by the Thunderhawks executing in that second quarter and just getting what they want on offense, still executing on that end of the ball. Kind of slowed down for a minute, but obviously Trey Perry just doing Trey Perry things and being able to create his own shot. And while we did see a lot of ball rotation and catch and shoot from the Thunderhawks in that first quarter, I think the thing that really separated them in that second quarter was their ability to adjust on defense while creating their own shot. And with that, we have Coach Atkins on the sideline with Blake Furnish. We'll send you down to them for some insight on the game. So far in the first half, our three-point shooting has been incredible, Coach. Are we going to continue to rely on that? Um, you know, we don't want to become too uh, three-point heavy, you know. Uh, we're at our best when we're attacking the rim and getting to the paint. Sometimes that leads to wide-open threes, and if, the, if it presents itself great, we just can't fall in love with it. Of course, and defensively, that switch to the 2-3 zone, how has that helped us? Well, we held them to four or six points in the second quarter compared to 19. I didn't feel like we got a stop in the first quarter. So, you know, we'll continue to mix it up in what we do, but uh, we got to be better defensively in the second half if we want a chance to win this game. Of course. So far, rebounding, we've been incredible. Are we going to continue to keep boxing out, try and, try and limit Andre Holden to, the, to limited rebounds? If they want to win a sectional championship, they will. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you to Blake for catching Atkins coming out of the tunnel there. Two minutes left until this second half gets underway. Both teams talking things over a little bit. East warming things up. Hamilton huddled up over there. And I, you got to think both teams are happy with what they've been doing on offense, though. Yeah, I feel like both teams just kind of, I think they're satisfied with what they're doing on offense, obviously. Hawks have been able to balance it between two quarters. But Hamilton, obviously, only scoring four points in that second quarter. Really not happy what they've done on offense. And just a credit to the Hawks defense being able to adjust and just kind of keep them out of the paint and force tough shots. And just Hawks have been active with their hands, getting out and running and controlling the ball. Yeah, and a key here coming out of halftime is East is going to have to keep their foot on the gas pedal. We've talked about it a lot across the season, but the third quarter, especially the beginning of it, they seem to slow down a little bit. They're going to have to come out hot out of that tunnel. Yeah, and coming out hot is definitely a... Big key to this third quarter. And whenever you got a seven point lead like this, obviously it's kind of second nature to just kind of lay back and say like, hey, like we got a cushion. We can afford to get away with some things. But Coach Atkins cannot be saying that's them in the huddle right now. Just Hawks have got to make sure that they're keeping their foot on the gas pedal. And I'm sure that is something that he preached in the locker room and he is preaching down there right now as we speak. Yeah, and in a big playoff game like this, you definitely are not satisfied with no matter how much of a lead you have, you keep wanting more points. Hamilton already out there lined up. Looks like they're ready to get the second half underway. He's still talking things over. You think Hamilton will want to go on a little bit of a, a scoring run? They really slowed down in that second quarter, like you mentioned. Yeah, well, East kind of had theirs in the second quarter with Trey Perry going on a 7-0 run by himself. And Hamilton, obviously, it's going to be very ideal for them if they can do the same, just kind of getting their big guys involved, just attacking the paint, much like St. X in the second half of the game on Wednesday obviously force feeding the ball into the paint to their 6'11 guys and obviously Hawks gotta be ready for Hamilton to do the same. Yeah and it seemed like Hamilton wasn't even playing that much worse offensively than East was. It was just a couple missed catches, bad shot selections maybe that really is the reason that they're down by seven here coming out of halftime. Yeah and it was a really good job by the Hawks to not bend and break whenever Hamilton was going on that scoring run and they were having great and they were having defensive breakdowns. Just great job by the Thunderhawks being able to be calm and collected, respond to that and run their offense and answer to everything that Hamilton has thrown at them. Hamilton looks like they're ready for this second half. Whistle blows and in it goes. The second half is underway. Here is Tillery giving it to Reed. Hamilton slowing things down, it looks like. Trying to find Holden in the paint. And it's going to go out of bounds, but looks like East touched it last. And that's just phenomenal help defense right there from Trey Perry in that zone. And kind of had Derek Jackson a little tripped up down there in the paint. It looked like it was going to be an easy bucket for Hamilton to start the half. But Trey obviously able to get his hands in there and be able to have the Hawks reset their defense. Tillery dishes it in here to Davis. Reed's got it. He drives in. Passing it over there to Bryant, who puts it up. And something that neither team has really utilized and something that we touched on in the first half was those ball fakes. And you see an early one from the big blue kind of getting Bachman off his feet. Perry's got it. Looks like someone's shaking up there on Hamilton. That's Marlon Reed. And he will come off here for, looks like Austin Page. 
Yeah, and just kind of giving both teams a chance to breathe right here. And curious to see is what the Hawks will come out and have their second half offense attack. And do you just got to think they're going to be looking to get more of that three ball going? Big loss there for Hamilton. Reed is their leading scorer at the moment with nine points. Perry's got at the top of the key working it around. He got a screen from Elijah Perry. Bachman trying to pass it to what looked like a ghost there, and Hamilton will get possession. Yeah, maybe just lost control of the ball right there, trying to dish it out to maybe Elijah Perry. But again, just one of those miscues for the Thunderhawks that you can't have because give Hamilton an inch and they'll start taking the whole game. East does not want to lose momentum coming out of halftime. Working it around here is Hamilton. Page giving it to Tillery, who gives it back to Barry. Davis yeah. back. They're working it around the perimeter right now. And one thing I just really love about this Hawks 2-3 zone is that no matter where you are on the floor, whether the ball's with you or away you, everyone is just in their defensive stance ready for anything to happen at any time. And that's why Hamilton has not really been able to get any open offensive looks here as of late. Page giving it. Gets it back. In the corner here, putting it up is Tillery. That one not going to fall. As Hamilton's able to get the rebound, Tillery will put it back up from mid-range, and that time they will get it with an and one opportunity. And Jackson just got to make sure he's boxing out and getting his hand up right there, because there's really no reason why Hamilton should have gotten that offensive rebound right there. And obviously, Hawks paying the price for it with the and one opportunity. Hamilton answering back out of halftime with a little run of their own. Five unanswered points here coming out of the half. Tillery will get his first free throw attempt for the night. Yeah, and again, it's just been a good job by Hamilton coming out of the locker room, kind of slowing down and running their offense, kind of getting some looks right there. Obviously, first possession was a pretty easy look under the basket, but a little tougher look for Tillery right there, and just Hawks being a little loose on the closeout right there, hence the foul. Tillery takes his dribbles, puts it up, and he won't get the bucket, though. The end one opportunity, no good, and... Hamilton walks away with only two points. Yeah, and just a perfect opportunity for East to answer back right here as they've done all night. Here's Perry giving it to Trey Perry, who puts it up for three. Perfect. And East finally has an answer. And just a great job by the Hawks offense right there, just getting Trey Perry the look that he wants. And you got to make sure that you're getting a finger on that ball if you're Hamilton, because if Trey Perry's able to square up like he did right there on that catch and shoot, then he's going to make you pay every time. East has been good from beyond the arc all day. Hamilton trying to answer back now. As Tillery will give it to Page. Back to Tillery, he thought about the three, he won't take it. Holden in the paint, puts it up, and he will get the bucket. 29 to 33 here in the third quarter. And again, those are just kind of the kind of shots for the Thunderhawks that they are gonna allow Hamilton to take, just as long as Holden's not driving in the paint. Derek Jackson will let him shoot that jump shot, and he does a good job of it right there. Just, again, great shot from the top right there from Holden. Bachman gives it to Elijah Perry, but he gets it back. Here's Jackson, he's got Hold'em on him. It's tipped, and looks like a foul gonna be called there. I think Hamilton will get possession. And just a few turnovers here early on for the Thunderhawks, and again, Hamilton just being a little bit more active with their hands, just kind of playing with a little bit more effort with their backs against the wall, and it's paid off for them as they are slowly but surely closing this gap. Marlon Reed back in there after he was shaken up earlier. Hamilton loves those fast break opportunities. East lucky that that foul might have happened as Tillery's got it. Back to Reed. Back to Tillery. In the paint there, putting it up is Hamilton, and somehow that one went in for Peyton Davis. And again, just a little bit of a defensive breakdown right there for the Thunderhawks. Obviously, having Wheeland in the paint by himself is not what they want. And Hamilton able to find the open guy right there and get another easy bucket to go. Bachman controlling it. He'll give it to Elijah Perry at the top of the key. Here's Trey Perry, he sunk a three not too long ago. Bachman to Elijah Perry in the corner, back to Bachman. Whelan will load up for three, and it won't go his way, but he's able to get it before it goes past Derek Jackson in the corner, and his three will fall. Massive offensive rebound right there for the Thunderhawks, giving them another chance, and Derek Jackson hitting a huge three to extend this lead back to five. Our first time out of the game, neither team had used one yet. We're gonna take a quick time out as well.
Welcome back. Hamilton will get the ball. Big three by Derek Jackson in the corner. Caused Hamilton to call a timeout. The first of the game, and Hamilton takes it up here. Yeah, and that was just massive by Derek Jackson at the end of that last possession. Obviously, Hamilton not really ready for him to leak out to the corner right there. And just the Thunderhawks able to get another open three in this game, and they've been able to cash in on most of those looks that they've gotten. East, great physical defense, but somehow Davis is able to get another layup, his second of this third quarter. Perry takes it up now, and a three-point game. And you just really can't play better defense right there if you're the Thunderhawks. Again, just letting Davis kind of get in there and get his shot and just kind of looked like he threw it up right there and just got it to go. Just really athletic play by him. Elijah Perry giving it to Whelan. East continues to work it around as Perry takes a deep three, and it's perfect. Perry's hot, 39 to 33 here in the third quarter. And just a little hand down, man down right there. Action from Trey Perry. Obviously catching Hamilton falling asleep right there and he's able to take full advantage on the deep three. A foul on the floor there on Holden. Bachman looks like he might again hit in the head there. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a questionable call right there. Looks like Hawks may have gotten all ball right there and Definitely could have been called a travel, and it looks like, as you mentioned, Bachman did catch an elbow. Looked like the medical staff came out for a second there. Bachman trying to wave him off. But I think ultimately they are going to have a look at him here. Bachman not happy with that at all. Yeah, and that's just a little bit of the concussion protocol right there, obviously taking a hit to the head. Going to kind of have to come out there for a minute and just make sure that he's okay, and the athletic training staff will check on him. Luke Shaw comes in. We saw last game Luke Shaw came in for Bachman at the end with crucial free throws that led to East winning against St. X. Here's Reed. He's got Shaw on him. Back to Page. Hamilton working it around the perimeter, trying to find some open look. Yeah, and Luke Shaw hitting those free throws at the end of last game is just kind of plays into that trust factor from Coach Atkins being able to trust the sophomore with the game on the line. And obviously that'll pay dividends here as Coach Atkins thinks about his substitutions for the rest of this playoff run. Good defense there, but still the mid-range is going to go for Tillery. But it looks like a charge is going to be foul called. Yeah, and again, just that's one of the worst miscues we've seen all night from Hamilton. And just getting the offensive foul right there, and it looks like they're going to wave off the basket. Big possession going to be waved off for Hamilton. Bachman will come back in. Barry comes back in for Hamilton. Never mind, looks like they are going to count that basket because the foul occurred after the ball went in but again nonetheless just a good job from Jackson obviously whenever you can rack up fouls it just will pay dividends as the quarter goes on with that a four point game here Whelan's got it handing it off to Shaw Bachman Bachman trying to find an open look that one tip somehow Whelan able to come up with that Good job by Whelan being able to focus and retain that ball and avoid another turnover. Again, another pass almost intercepted. Bachman, and looks like that one was tipped. Would have been a good shot for Whelan, but looks like the refs didn't see it that way, and Hamilton will get the ball. Yeah, I mean, I just think Bachman maybe trying to lead it to the right a little bit right there. Could have been tipped, but that's a tough call to make. And again, unfortunately for the Thunderhawks, just doesn't go their way. And just going to have to stand tall again, once again, on defense. And bringing in Elijah Perry should help with that. Trey Perry summing out here. He'll get a break. Hamilton will take advantage of this possession. And they will dribble it up the court. A chance to make it a one-possession game. And we have seen Hamilton try to cut into this lead. And wide open look right there is not ideal. And, and a foul going to be called off the ball on Lakota East. Not sure what happened there. And I think it's going to send Hamilton to the free throw line. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be a pass in for Hamilton. And not really sure what's going on right now. Um, whether that, and it looks like they are going to count the basket. So just a little grab underneath while that ball was going up. And I believe by the rule book that would go down as an and one, but not really sure what the refs are going to rule in. Looks like neither team not really sure. Looks like it will be a pass in for Hamilton. They have a chance to tie it up here. A big mistake by East as Holden is fouled going up. And two shots come Hamilton's way. And again, could be, could be wrong there, but I've just never really seen that call before on the grab with the shot going up. Usually results in an and one opportunity, but 
Hamilton getting a whole extra possession right there, and Holden will have a chance to make it a tie game. Interesting situation here as Holden will get two shots and a chance for this game to be back to a tied one if he can make both. And kind of suspicious on if that was the right call right there, but had to know that Hamilton was going to claw their way back eventually, and on the verge of a tie game here in the third quarter, Hawks are going to have to respond once again. Nonetheless, the first free throw for Holden is good. He'll try to make his second, and East cannot afford to lose their momentum here. This game got a lot closer in a very short span of time as the second free throw won't fall, but Hamilton's able to put it back up and they take the lead. And again, just a little bit of miscues right there for the Thunderhawks. Not boxing out and able to allow that offensive rebound and Hamilton just able to cash it in once again and just like that in the blink of an eye, a five point possession. Hamilton has the lead for the first time since the second quarter. Bachman almost lost it there, but he's able to feel it and give it to Shaw. Shaw trying to find somebody open, gives it to Whelan in the paint. Whelan giving it to Jackson, who's on the baseline. Tipped by Hamilton and a turnover. And momentum definitely shifting over to the big blue right now. Hawks cannot bend. 1.45 left in the third quarter. Here is Reed from three, and it's good. Hamilton is hot right now. East does not have an answer. Yeah, and again, just a defensive breakdown right there. Hamilton not really great on the contested threes, but whenever they do get open looks from out there, most of the time they are going to knock it down, and Hamilton just starting to pull away. Perry's deep three is going to be good as well. Back to a one-point game. And that is the benefit of having a guy like Trey Perry just ending the run right there, stopping the bleeding. That is the biggest three that the Hawks have made all night. Perry continues to be hot beyond the three-point line. Hamilton working it around here, trying to find another open look. Here's Davis in the paint. It's an unlucky bounce as it bounces out, and Whelan's able to field the rebound. Gives it to Bachman. Bachman almost had Perry open, but Jackson under the rim puts it up, and it's good. And just like that, the Hawks have the lead once again due to great passing and communication, grabbing that defensive rebound, and Jackson able to find his way into the paint. Back to this offensive battle here that we saw in the first quarter as Holden gets it under the rim. He'll answer back. Hamilton regains the lead. And Perry will slow things down as 39 seconds are left in this third quarter. Yeah, and that's the right play right there. Just slow things down. Don't panic. Try and get the last shot and go in the fourth quarter with a lead. Looks like this is going to be anyone's game going into the third quarter. It will come down to the final whistle. Bachman holding the ball. Derek Jackson's got it now. Wheeland got two guys on him. Back to Jackson. He's working it around well here. Clock ticks below 10. Perry going to put it up from deep. No good off the front of the rim. And Hamilton is going to put it up too low. Clock will hit zeros here in the third quarter. We hope you'll stick with us for the fourth. This should be an exciting end to this game. Welcome back. Fourth quarter basketball looking to be a super close finish. Hamilton has a one-point lead, but the end of that third quarter was just back and forth. Both teams firing and making all their shots. Yeah, and again, just a little questionable on the call right there whenever Hamilton got an extra possession. Just That was when the momentum started to roll with them, and Trey Perry with a big three to kind of answer to that to cut it to a one-point game, and Hawks have just been able to respond to everything that 
Hamilton has thrown with them all night. Who is going to impose their will here in the fourth quarter? Perry's got it. East going to want to score early. Whelan thought about putting up the three. He decides not to. And looks like that ball somehow stayed in bounds, and Hamilton gets possession. And that's just one of those threes that you want to see Whelan pull right there. He's been pulling it all of this playoff run and definitely a very high percentage shot. Tillery gives it to Barry, who gives it to Davis. Here's Holden. Holden been shut down for the most part tonight, but he is still a factor in the paint. Here's Reed. Hamilton just working it around here. He's trying to not give up any open looks. Back to Tillery at about the half court line. Yeah, now we're just going to kind of see Hamilton try to slow it down and kind of play with the lead right here and control the ball, look for an open look, and try to get the Hawks' defense tired. That one's going to be called a foul on Tyler Bachman. Hamilton will dish it in from the inbound line. Tillery going to be the one to pass it in. Looks like the ball a little bit, a little bit wet, but... Ref drives it off, in it goes. Reed got Shaw on him at the top of the key. Long possession here for Hamilton. Here's Barry. Very long possession indeed, but the Hawks have got to understand that it's just a one-point game with just under seven minutes left to go, so you'll let Hamilton hold the ball just as long as there's no defensive breakdowns. Everyone is staying assignment sound and staying home. And East did win last game against Xavier, obviously, but... They were outscored 21 to 13 in the fourth quarter, looking to not do that. Big turnover there for East. Yeah, and we've talked about it at times. Just the longer that these possessions go on, the more susceptible teams are to turnovers, and you just see the Hawks getting one right there, able to take advantage of the miscue. Over to Shaw at the half court line. Shaw trying to find somebody open. Wheeling to Jackson in the corner. Perry under the basket. He's going to be fouled off the ball, or off on the floor. Yeah, and I think that was a wise decision right there from Derek Jackson. Thinking about pulling that three, but obviously seeing your best player cut into the rim right there, that's the look that the Thunderhawks won. Hamilton wisely able to foul him on the floor. Bays Whelan will dish it in for East. Giving it up to Perry. Jackson's got it. Over to Bachman. Trying to find a little bit of separation. Perry tried to disappear in the defense, but Hamilton was still all over it. Yeah, they're definitely going to be looking to neutralize him here in the fourth quarter. And much like the first quarter, I feel like you're just going to kind of see Hamilton just be like, you can beat us, but Trey Perry is not going to be the one to beat us. Someone else is going to have to do it. Perry, that mid-range fadeaway not going to be good. Hamilton giving it up to Holden. Holden going to put it up from the free throw line, and it will roll in for him. And just a Hail Mary pass right there that Holden is able to grab and put up the mid-range just... Again, playmakers making plays for Hamilton. Whelan trying to answer back. The three-point shot is not going to go. Hamilton will try to extend their lead. Tillery's taking it up. He'll slow things down, try to get this offense going. And Thunderhawks with their backs against the wall right now and expect to see another long possession here for the Big Blue. Reed going to hold it here. He'll put it up from three. The step back, though, won't fall for him. Perry taking it up the court. He's got Shaw. Shaw back to Perry, back to Whelan. Bachman. Jackson in the corner, he made one from there earlier, but that one won't be good. Hamilton again slow things down, try to get another long possession. And just the Thunderhawks not able to get those threes to go, and Hamilton's going to call a timeout, but good job by Jackson being ready to catch and shoot that one, just a little too strong. Three-point game going into this timeout. We'll take a quick break.
Welcome back, three-point game. Hamilton kind of owned it coming out of this second, into the second half. They're up by three, and East needs to answer back here. They cannot afford to be down by more than one possession. Yeah, and these are just the kind of situations that we did talk to Coach Atkins about, just kind of the experience in the fourth quarter in the regular season, playing to the opportunity that they have now, and Thunderhawks obviously got to be ready to answer to anything that Hamilton throws at them. Hamilton working it around the perimeter and tipped out, but Hamilton will get the ball back. Just a chance for the Hawks to reset their defense right there and good hands from Whelan. Tillery will pass it in. Giving it to Reed. Hamilton continues to slow things down. East definitely wants to get this ball back. Holden's got it. And it's tipped there. Whelan able to get it on the turnover. Here's Jackson. Looks like he had a couple open guys, but ultimately gives it to Whelan. Shaw's got it back to Whelan. Trying to find an open look. Here's Perry. Perry's been pretty much automatic from beyond the three-point line tonight. Yeah, and the Thunderhawks just kind of trying to keep their composure, take this clock down, knowing that it's only a three-point game. Whelan's three-pointer is good, a crucial one, and it's back to a tie game. Another timeout going to be called by Hamilton as they want to talk things over. We'll take another quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back, all tied up in the fourth quarter. Four minutes left, and he's just sunk a huge three. Yeah, Bay's wheeling right there with the ice in his veins, sinking that three right there, just able to square up and tie this game for the Thunderhawks. They need to get a defensive stop. Hamilton takes it up, looking to answer. Here's Tillery working it around. Finds Holden at the top of the key, back to Tillery. Hamilton trying to find an open guy driving around somewhere. Yeah, now the offensive approach has got to be a little different now that the game is tied for Hamilton. And we've kind of seen them at their best with their backs against the walls. You see right there, able to retake the lead. Back door open there for Davis, and he takes that shot. 49 to 47 now. East will try to answer back as well. Bachman to Perry in the corner, who puts it up. And he will be fouled going up for the three, and he'll get three free throws here. Everyone in the gym holding their breath right there, and Trey Perry just putting up that three-point shot, but a little aggressive on the closeout for the Big Blue, and he'll have a chance to go to the free throw line and give the Thunderhawks the lead. Perry's exactly the guy you want to send to the free throw line for three shots if you're East. They have a chance to take a one-point lead here if he can sink all three. First one up, it'll fall for him, 49 to 48. Yeah, and obviously, like you mentioned earlier, the best free throw shooter in the GMC He's the guy you want at the line in a situation like this. Second one good as well. All tied up here in the fourth. 316 left. A couple of subs coming in for both teams. Elijah Perry subbing in for Luke Shaw. Trey Perry lining up to take his last shot. And he continues to be perfect on the night from the free throw line. Sinks all three, 50 to 49. Hamilton will have to answer back. Trey Perry making Hamilton paying the price for fouling him and sending him to the line. And just a great job of him getting up there, taking a deep breath, and sinking all three. Davis gives it to Reed. Hamilton trying to find another open look under the basket. 
Good ball handle there by Page. Yeah, really back to Davis. Fortunately for the Hawks, didn't make anything of it. Page had 18 points in their last game against Fairfield, but he's been pretty much shut down tonight. He's got it again over to Holden. Got Jackson on him. Hamilton owning possession right now. Holden's got it. He'll put it up, and it will bounce back out, but Hamilton's able to get the rebound, and a foul looks like it's called off the ball. Uh, and just... Right there for the Thunderhawks, obviously a backbreaker right there. You get Holden to miss that mid-range and just not able to get the defensive glass. Looks like it's going to be a timeout called. We'll step away for just a second. Welcome back, East up by one here in this fourth quarter. Hamilton just took a timeout. They have the ball to start coming out of the timeout. Yeah. And they were finally able to get Holden to miss that mid-range shot, but just a killer offensive rebound and Hamilton getting another chance to possession here. Just got to stand tall on defense. And a big reason why Hamilton destroyed Fairfield in their last game was because they out-rebounded Fairfield two to one. As Page has an open look from the three-point line and he will take it two-point game here in the fourth. And that's just a big three right there from Page, and bad job by the Hawks neglecting him behind the arc right there. Perry will give it to Whelan. Here's Bachman. East cannot get frustrated here off of that possession. They've got to answer back. And the paint is Bachman over to Jackson, who thought about taking it but won't. Lob it back to Trey Perry. Got a screen. Good adjustment there as Whelan down the baseline will put it up. Bounces off the front of the rim and Hamilton's able to come away with the rebound. And just running floater right there from Whelan. Very unfortunate he couldn't get that one to go in. Now under two minutes, the clock becomes a factor. Here's Page. Hamilton going to try to hold it for as long as they can. Whelan on him. East would love to get a turnover here. Perry on Reed. Over to Tillery, back to Page, who just sunk that big three. Bachman on Page. And it bounces off of his foot, and East will get the ball. A crucial ball handling error for Hamilton. And just a great job there by Bachman, making it hard on Page and able to get him to dribble it off his foot, just trying to be a little too cute right there with the ball handling. Whelan will dish it into Trey Perry, exactly what East wanted in this situation. Page will sub out there. East will likely try to take their time, find an open look. Don't want to force anything here. And just trying to, yeah, like you mentioned, slowing things down, trying to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers like Trey Perry and Whelan and guys who have just hurt Hamilton all night. Back out to Whelan there. Here's Jackson. He's continuing to work it around the perimeter. They cannot afford to turn it over here. Whelan was wide open there, but Shaw didn't see it. Back to Perry. Perry gives it to Bachman in the corner. His three's gonna bounce in and out. And Hamilton will take their time here. Quality look right there for Tyler Bachman. Just again, the Hawks not being able to get another corner three to go. Timeout will be called by Hamilton. 38 seconds left in the fourth quarter and it'll all come down to these next two possessions.
this a crucial 40 seconds of basketball. Hamilton has possession. They just called a timeout. East will need to get a turnover here. 38 seconds left on the clock. And it is going to be vital for the Thunderhawks that they get a turnover right here because Hamilton been pretty good from the free throw line here tonight, but you don't want that to become the thing that the game relies on. Got to get a turnover right here and set up some traps. Here's Paige trying to find somebody. Davis, press defense here from the Hawks. In the corner, and a foul will be called there on the East. 29 seconds left. And a good job by Hamilton controlling the ball and passing it around, making the Hawks work for that foul. No one close to bonus trouble yet on either side of the ball. Tillery will dish it in. Another foul there, Smyers. 27 seconds left. And respect, respect to Smyers right there for going for the ball, just had bad positioning right there reaching around. Hamilton continues to just play keep away. East needs a turnover here. Davis under the rim, a crucial miss! And he's fouled coming back down with the rebound. And Luke Shaw right there, just great defense under the basket, getting him to miss that layup, but again, just the offensive rebounds continuing to be a factor. Hamilton came up with a huge board there as they get another chance to push it in. This has been a long possession at the end of a game that's been close all day. See, Hawks bringing some subs in once again. Whelan gonna check back in. McFarlane in here, Elijah Perry coming off. And another timeout here, gonna be called by Hamilton. And what do you think East is gonna to do to try to get this ball back here late? I think first you obviously gotta go for the turnover. Just don't settle with a touch foul. You got 23 seconds left. Hamilton obviously gonna take care of the ball to the best of their ability, but if the Thunderhawks can get them to smoke a layup like they just did and actually grab the rebound, or just if they can get a turnover here, that would obviously be huge. The least ideal situation would be to send Hamilton to the free throw line. Yeah, I think you got a pressure here, but be careful. Obviously Hamilton been forced into a couple bad mistakes in this game, but right now they're kind of owning possession, trying to just dribble this game away. Yeah, it seems like the bad mistakes that they made earlier are gonna kind of play into the end of this game, whether they'll keep making those mistakes or whether it'll just be a point of emphasis to not make those mistakes. And let's just see how both teams handle this moment. It'll be interesting to see how they dish it in here. East obviously gonna be looking to get a quick turnover as 23 seconds are left in this fourth quarter. Yeah, and East not quite breaking the huddle just yet. Coach Atkins making sure that every guy knows what he wants. Five guys coming back out for East. Final 24 seconds of this basketball game. It's been a good one. Hamilton looking to pass it in. Yeah, and Hawks coming out in a true man-to-man -man right now. I like McFarland being down there on the baseline. Finding Davis, he's fouled going up. He'll get two shots. And just a little too much body right there from Whelan, and now Davis able to go up with the ball and get a couple of chances for some free throws right here. This could very well be the ball game. Definitely did not want to send Davis to the line. He's Hamilton's best free throw shooter at 80%. And he'll line up for two. Could seal the deal. And something that we mentioned last game against St. Xavier, doesn't matter your percentage from the free throw line. When it comes down to a crucial moment like this, you either have it or you don't. Let's see if Davis can do it. When we come back from the timeout, the two free throws that could put the nail on the coffin. Two free throws coming up here. 22 seconds left. Peyton Davis at the line, Hamilton's best free throw shooter. He has a chance to put the nail in the coffin for Hamilton. Yeah, and just for the Thunderhawks, just 
Point of emphasis here, you can't control whether he makes those free throws or not, but they have got to get the board, say he were to miss the second one. Crowd getting loud here. His first one's no good, a crucial miss from the line. And like we mentioned, free throw percentage does not matter when it comes to a situation like this, and Davis missing a crucial one right there. That Thunderhawks crowd a factor right here. And not really sure what's going on right there. They want Jackson to be on Holden, but ref's not allowing it. Sean Holden, Dirk Jackson lining up in the paint. Second one good, three point game, 22 seconds left. Now you've got the chance to tie it if you're the Thunderhawks after the first miss. All comes down to this. Thunderhawks been good from beyond the arc tonight. Shaw, a lot of pressure, and Perry is fouled, not gonna be called. Hamilton has a chance. Here's Reed from mid-range, puts it up for the alley-oop, and that should seal the game. I don't, I don't know how you don't call that foul right there. And now they will call the foul, but Perry definitely got bumped before that ball got taken away, and just unfortunately from the Thunderhawks, couldn't get the call in. That should very well wrap this one up. Perry is fouled, four seconds left. I, I honestly can't believe that wasn't called a foul there against Trey Perry. Yeah, I'm speechless with that one. Catching the ball just getting, looked like getting tackled right there on top of the free three point line and Trey Perry letting the ref hear it and rightfully so. A timeout called by East, 4.8 seconds left. This game pretty much over unless East can get a miracle. Yeah, and again, just some questionable calls right there in the second half and Good job by the Hawks being able to respond, but none bigger than that one right there on the turnover, and then Holden just slamming the game away with that dunk. Another heartbreaking loss if they can't pull this one away by East. Had so many close games this year. East five come back out on offense. They're gonna need a big offensive play. And it's just kind of been the story of the year for the Thunderhawks, just not quite being able to close out these games. Not sure what happened there. It looks like clock ticks down to zero, not 100% on what's going on. Refs discussing down there. We're getting some boost from the east side. Boost from both sides. I think everyone in this gym is confused as to what's going on at the moment. Yeah, definitely been a lot of confusion here over the last couple minutes and what has transpired, but not sure what the verdict will be here. Clock still reads double zeros, and they're going to add 4.8. Not sure what confusion happened there. Five seconds left. Perry just puts it up from three. Not going to be good. Holden able to get the rebound. Hamilton will come away victorious to advance on in these playoffs. The East season will come to an abrupt end. Yeah, and just very unfortunate ending for the Thunderhawks, just not quite being able to close this one out. And Again, had a chance to tie the game, but the costly turnover there at the end on Trey Perry's body bump in. Again, just been very grateful to call these games and be back with you for some spring sports. But again, Thunderhawks season comes to a very disappointing end. Love watching. Guys team play, girls team play, and just been an honor to call these games with you. Yeah, for sure. Want to give a big thanks to everyone who's watched us throughout the season, as well as our sponsors, Spark, Butler Tech, and all of the staff here on this Lakota East Broadcasting team. I'm Max Earl. I've been with Camden Braden for this one, and we'll see you in the spring for some spring sports.